Hello, everyone, and welcome to Job Board Geek, the podcast about the business of connecting candidates and employers. I'm Jeff Dickey Chasens, your host, the Job Board Doctor, and with me today is the illustrious Stephen Rothberg of College Recruiter. Hi, Stephen. How are you doing? I am good. Illustrious. I'm I'm kind of feeling like I'm going to start getting names like hurricanes pretty soon. You keep coming up with a different one each week. You know, as I've said before, I had to put my English major background to work somehow. Uh, so, um, at any rate, um, today we are very lucky to have Jennifer Johansson of Placed here with us. And uh, she has a service for the hospitality industry that I think is really, really interesting and has some really cool features. But first, um, I thought, Stephen, we could chat a little bit about something that happened this week to someone that I think we both know. Yeah. Um, the uh, Seek Out, uh, the uh, Seattle-based company, became a unicorn. They basically got some new funding and their valuation is over a billion dollars. And so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, they're part of what I call uh, people aggregators. I'm not sure if anyone else really uses mm. this term, but I started using this term back around 2010, 2011 when they started showing up. Basically, uh, SeekOut takes a whole bunch of data about people gathered from a lot of different sources like GitHub and, and the general internet and um, just various and sundry databases. They append information to it and then uh, companies can use them for use this data to source candidates, and uh, it you know they've got literally hundreds of millions of names in there. And I I went and looked in my database because I've been tracking this for a while, and I I found something kind of interesting, and it maybe it speaks to the future of Seek Out. I looked at some of the pioneers that were in the people aggregating say <laughs> space. Uh, the first one was Talent Bin. Well, they uh -huh. got bought by Monster, and then there was Connectifier. Uh, created by a couple of ex-Googlers, and they got bought by LinkedIn. And then uh, more recently, Swoop Talent got bought by SAP. Um, one of the ones that's still out there that has not been bought is Telenia. Uh, and it was uh, created by Gal Amog, who's also the fellow that created Real Match, which turned into Pando Logic. And I thought this was interesting that all these... these um, these companies got bought or, or rolled into other things. And then sure enough, I'm reading the seek out information and they're saying, well, we're going to use our money to actually add a new service where companies can use our tool to search their own ATSs for people. Because, you know, if you're a big company, you've probably got thousands and thousands of names in there. And I've seen several of the other people, aggregator companies do the same thing. Hiring Solved is a good example of that. And I just think it's interesting because they all sort of started from the same place and now they're kind of ending up in the same place. Um, what are your thoughts on this, Stephen? Yeah, you know, I I agree with what um, with what you're saying, but I don't think that their direction of SeekOut is to be a people aggregator. I think that's where they where they've come from, but I don't think that's where they're going. And hmm. I think that the investment is more a reflection of where they're going than where they've come from or even where they are. Um, so first of all, the, the CEO, um, I had the pleasure of speaking with him at a, a TA tech conference. I think it was a TA tech conference probably three years ago. Um, mm -hmm. And Seacoat was, let's call it an embryonic stage. At that point, right. I mean, it I remember was live. That. I think they had some customers, but it was early, 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 early. Um, very impressive. Um, I don't recall if I had learned prior to meeting to, with him or shortly after. Um, and there was a group of us. It wasn't a one-on-one. -on -one. But um, but he was basically Bill Gates's right-hand man. Um, right. right. So he's got street cred right there with you know virtually everybody other than the criminally insane. And... <laughs> um, I heard him um, on an interview with uh, that George LaRock of, of WorkTech just um, just recorded and released. Um, George is on our board of advisors, one of the smartest guys in the M&A and investment world where money is coming from. Um, and according to that interview, their revenues right now are relatively low, $25 million mm -hmm. a year, um, growing at 
um, probably several fold a year. So their valuation is based upon where they're going to be five years from now, much more right. so than where they've been the last year, uh, because you don't become a $1.2 billion valuation company with $25 million in revenue. The numbers just don't work. Um, but if that $25 million is going to be $250 million in a few years, then absolutely the $1.2 billion is, is, is worth it. So I think that there's a lot of valuation being placed upon their leadership team, which is very justified. Um, and I see their future as being not in the job board space. Um, Anoop, actually, the CEO, Anoop, um, said in that interview that job boards suck. And I actually replayed it. It's like, did he really just say that? <laughs> Which is interesting because we'll get into that conversation with Jennifer in, in a little bit too. But um, it's like, yeah, no, he really said job boards suck. Um, I don't see their future as being in the talent acquisition space, driving candidates to employers as much as internal mobility and really helping to reshape the workplace. If companies mm -hmm. can better retain talent, companies don't have to recruit as much talent and companies will be more productive. And I think that's that's the that's the brass ring, um, not the company, but that's the brass ring that Anoop is going after. And if he's even partially successful, that that'll be awesome for all of us because he will make the world a better place. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And uh, so we're we're going to put a marker on that, Stephen, and we'll check back in a year and see what's really happened. Um, but yeah, he's he's a he's a very impressive person, and I think he's building an impressive company. And speaking of another impressive company, today we have as our guest uh, Jennifer Johansson. Her company is called Placed. It's a app that uh, helps hospitality organizations hire people, and that does it in a different sort of way. So, welcome to Job Board Geek, Jennifer. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was wondering if you could just uh, give us a very sort of quick rundown on where you come from, you know, how you got into this space and just a sort of a top level view of Placed. Yeah, of course. Um, so I'm yeah, Jennifer. I'm the founder of, of Placed. Um, initially from Sweden, I moved to, to London, UK about 12, 13 years ago. Um, I started working in the hospitality sector when I first moved to London. Um, I was working at Sawyer House initially and then moved to another company that was sort of indirectly working with hospitality businesses, um, building up relationships, sat in a lot of meetings with managers mm -hmm. and, and venue owners and had conversations. And I think every time the sort of like staffing issues came up, um, so not from a recruitment background, hospitality background, sort of saw firsthand what an issue this is with that sort of high churn service sector. Um, started looking into it a little bit. In the UK, hospitality is the largest employer of people under 25 years old. And yet you're looking mm. at how they recruit and it's staff needed signs and windows very old school um, job boards, um, but also sort of, yeah, print your CV, come along to an interview. And you, you look at these, these audience they try to attract, the, the under 25, the very like mobile first generation, they don't have CVs, they definitely don't have printers at home to print a CV and go to an interview. And that's very much right. where I saw the need um, for place. Interesting. Yeah, I, yeah, I think, um, I was telling you before we started recording that I went to your website and it says your jobs, your way, we all deserve better than job boards. And, you know, actually, believe it or not, even though we call this a job board geek podcast, I think both Stephen and I think that traditional job boards kind of suck. Yeah. Um, they just, you know, they're, 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 they're a design whose time has passed. Um, so I think that's one of the things that I really found that was interesting about placed is that, um, you do say, you know, we don't focus on CVs, we focus on the skills. And I thought one of the interesting things that you had in there was uh, the ability for candidates to get in and actually uh, do some upskilling of themselves. Can, can you tell us a little bit about how that works? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, the, the sectors that we cover, yeah, hospitality, retail, um, sort of like broader service sectors, I think there are mm -hmm. sectors they don't often recruit like experience, past experience and skills is often not needed, whereas personality and attitude is, is super, super key. Um, what we're doing in place is really putting that candidate first. Um, 
to moving away from from CVs. I think you know you can be an amazing bartender, an amazing chef. You may not know how to write an amazing CV, and that sometimes can eliminate your chances of getting a job, which isn't correct mm-hmm. in the service sector. Um, so candidates, they download the app, they go through various different questionnaires and quizzes. We're trying to make it a lot more interesting. We're trying to understand them a lot more. You know, what sort of values are you looking for? Are you looking for career progression or is it more of a summer gig, for example? Um, based on that, candidates yeah, create their profiles and then automatically get matched to suitable employers. Once they've obviously yeah, matched employers, can start applying for jobs. As you say, there are various different other bits um, at place as well. So we've got a community um, section where we host mm-hmm. a lot of content, quite branded content uh, that we put together um, with our employers um, and, cli- and clients as well. So like interview tips, um, better understanding of different companies, and then on to these sort of like yeah, upskilling quizzes. So those quizzes are actually put together by the companies as well. So it's allowing an employer to connect with the future oh. workforce in a different way. Um, they could be like a fun fact quiz, for example. We obviously work with a lot of like casual dining chains, big hospitality groups that might have like interesting uh, history or interesting menus. So they're putting that on a quiz. We do have some more like general uh, quizzes around customer service roles, chef roles, barista roles um, as well for mm-hmm. yeah for candidates to learn and educate themselves about the sector before applying for roles. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> That's awesome. The... Um... You know, I love I love the fact that it's not just a uh, connector between employers and and candidates, um, which I think is sort of the, the traditional job board model. It's 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 really making those candidates better, which just helps everybody up and down. Well, no, pun not intended until now because I'm still going to go forward with it, <laughs> but it's everybody up and down the food chain. Ha 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 ha. Um, <laughs> So um, a question for you, you know, one of the big differences between the, the market that where Jeff and I sit in the U.S. and the U.K. market is that in the U.S., um, staffing companies are almost an afterthought. Very few candidates will find a job through a staffing company. Um, and in the U.K., it's it seems very much the opposite. Uh, staffing companies do a lot more of the um, recruitment, the sourcing, et cetera, for a lot of the employers. Um, For Placed, is it the actual employer? Is it the staffing company? Sort of like who's your your audience on the customer side, on the employer side? Are you selling mostly to staffing companies, mostly to the end employer, combination of both? Um, so we actually only send to um, sell into to employers directly and um, we don't allow staffing or agencies sort of on the platform. I think, again, coming back to this core focus on, on candidate first and the candidate experience, connecting with the employer directly, we believe you are going to have a, a better experience than through an agency or a staffing company who might think a little bit more about their own margins and, and those sort of things. So that's why we're doing that. Um, second of all, the way that employers are sort of building when they sign up to play similar to the candidates, they also go through quizzes and, and questionnaires to build their employer profiles. Um, a lot of sort of like employer branding are sitting on there as well. And that's also something that we feel staffing agencies wouldn't really um, help. I, I'm kind of curious, this is sort of tied to that. Um, in terms of the revenue model uh, for placed, um, how do employers pay? Are they basically paying for a certain a certain license for a certain period of time or are they allowed certain number of slots where they can advertise positions or how do you guys do that um so we've got a um subscription model um for our employers Um, Mm and so our employers basically pay for the access um it's based on how many vacancies you're looking to hoist on your brand page at any one time Um, and then we've got sort of like different tiers depending on yeah what you can access on the platform um, so we've got our absolutely you can access your applications coming in. We also got a matches feature, which is kind of like the job board's CV database, which is a little bit separate. It's more filtered that you could access. You can go in and like headhunt candidates straight away. And then, as I mentioned, this mm. sort of like yeah, employer brand that you build up and, and hosting staff testimonials and really showing off what it's like to work for your company. Um, and then our team internally help companies to build that out as well. Okay. Um, so 
And this actually brings me to the other thing that I always am curious about. How have you built your audience on the candidate side? You know, how, 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 did, how do candidates even find out about uh, Placed? And, and the same thing on the employer side. How, how, how do employers discover you guys? Um, so on the candidate side, um, I think this is also what sets us apart from a lot of, of job boards as well. I think we, yeah, we find all our candidates through social media and a lot of yeah, targeted mm. Facebook ads. We do a lot of, of TikTok advertising, uh, Snapchat. Again, the audience that we focus on is very much the, the under 25, the mobile first generation, as I mentioned. These are the channels that are on every day and all day. I think it's it's different in a sense because it's a lot more targeted and it's a little bit more passive. I think job boards, mm-hmm. they rely heavily on SEO and people going in and, and searching for roles, which absolutely right. is great because you want to connect with candidates who are looking for a job. But what if you can actually connect with candidates before they've got into the, the stage where they start searching for jobs? Um, so coming mm. in, yeah, trying to, to get the candidates on a little bit earlier. Again, coming back to our like community section of the app, you don't just have to come to place to find your next job. You can actually yeah, educate yourself, um, connect with the sector, um, consume our content, etc. So that's the, so the, the that... main driver. Mm, sorry, Stephen. Oh, I was just going to say, this, so does that mean that if if college recruiter were to start to invest heavily in TikTok videos that I could uh, convince my wife that that's actually a work function when I'm spending time (laughs) on TikTok. (laughs) But college recruitment, Uh, absolutely. (laughs) Excellent. I have a feeling it probably works better for uh, place than it would for you, Stephen, but (laughs) who who knows? Um, How about on the employer side? Because that's, I assume that's going to be a pretty different approach, right? Yeah, I think we, we yeah we're quite we're quite lucky in the sense on the employer side. I think we've got a lot of word of mouth. I think we had early on mm. happy customers that were sort of yeah small industry spreading the word. Um, sixty two percent of our revenue at the moment is coming from inbound leads. Um, so the likes of McDonald's came book wow. the demo via our website. We we're seeing a lot of these great success stories. Um, on top of that, we've got a brilliant um sales and marketing team. So we do obviously yeah reach out to to employers as well, and we do email marketing automated and then we've got our, our sales team who's connecting with with people on on linkedin and, and reaching out to them so, um i i guess the one thing that ha- has me a little bit um curious uh and certainly in the u.s i i think i'm pretty sure this is the case in the uk i know it is in the eu the hospitality sector the retail sector all the service sectors have been horribly hit by the pandemic yeah. And I'm just wondering what effect that had for you guys and or has it had any effect? Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, by the time COVID hits, we were actually only focusing on the hospitality sector. So as a business, oh. together with COVID, all the restaurants sort of went into lockdown. We lost our revenue overnight because we decided to pause all our subscription for our customers to sort of help them out. That was also the year when we started going into other sectors. We started working with the care sector, for example, uh, the retail mm-hmm. sector, supermarkets. And I think we realized there's a lot of these other industries that were very interested in finding um, hospitality candidates. Um, and then obviously, fast forward 2021, um, big year for place and, and and probably not just yeah, our sector, but the, the, the bounce back year, right? Uh, so I think recruitment overall was, was really busy last year. Um, I think for the hospitality and the retail sector, it's not, obviously we've had Brexit, Brexit in the UK as well. Um, so I don't think the pandemic right. is, yeah, it's been looming for many years before Brexit as well. Obviously everyone knew it was coming. So I think there's been an issue for many years that no one really dealt with. I think one thing we um, find quite interesting and, and, and great is we speak to so many like HR directors and, and recruitment managers. And I think they all saying like it's it's a very difficult time, but it's also exciting because for the first time in so long, this is actually a problem at like board level. CEOs are involved with recruitment and talent attraction. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so it's, it's really the right timing and, and time to do something um, new. It's obviously what we feel. Okay, that makes sense. Um, Jennifer, maybe you can talk a little bit about your your growth plans, because uh, it sounds like, um, at least in part due to COVID, um, you went into other industries, which makes a ton of sense. A ton of those hospitality people ended up in working in nursing homes, you know, doing somewhat similar work, 
hourly paid, et cetera. Um, so it's fantastic that you were able to help them. Are you looking at, at branching out to, um, to the continent, to um, outside of the EU, to Asia, North America, et cetera? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we definitely have international expansion on the horizon and we are in the middle of our next funding round. And following that, it's going to be another 12, 18 months quite focused on the UK. We work with a lot of chains and and sort of groups that have sites across the UK. So having that like strong UK footprint is, is super important for us um, before going outside of the UK. But no, absolutely. I think, yeah, what you're talking about inside and outside of, of Europe as well, um, especially due to Brexit, looking at how can we actually, yeah, maybe go in and, and help um, workers in the U- UK, in, in Europe coming back to the UK, just when it comes to like visas and those sort of things as well. Mm. So, so Jennifer, I, I have one final question for you, and then we're going to have to close up. Um, but I looked at your LinkedIn profile, and the header picture showed a bus with an with a big uh, ad on the side. And I, I'm just wondering, it was um, have you done a lot of offline advertising to promote the site? Um, no, uh, y- yes, I know. Um, that was our first out of home um, campaign. We actually did, yeah, right after mm-hmm. COVID when everything started to open up. Did you see what it what it was mm-hmm. what it said on the bus? <laughs> uh, no, my, I, I I didn't see. What did it say? It said, uh, I mean, we had a few different ones. I think one said, "Step aside, job boards, a new sheriff is in town." <laughs> 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 we were trying to make a bit of a, a statement. <laughs> Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah, I guess I should have read it more carefully. But uh, <laughs> oh, well, that you know, I think it's great. I think it's great. Um, I'm I'm actually an advocate for cha- for getting rid of the word job board because it's so not descriptive of ninety percent of what's out there. But um, you know, it's like band aid. It's one of those words that everyone uses now. And you know, although I guess if you're in the UK, you call them plasters, right? Not not band aids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so so much for that idea oh well uh, well jennifer thanks so much for coming on and if any of the listeners want to get a hold of you uh and and give you a ring uh, how do they reach you uh, linkedin is probably the the best way um to to reach me um so yeah definitely feel free to to reach out we'd love to have um conversations job seekers or employers or other similar businesses alike as well um so jennifer johansson and place app on linkedin Great, great. Well, well, thanks so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Thanks and so uh, Stephen, if people if people want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? Yeah, when I'm uh, not walking my dog, they can email me at Stephen, <laughs> S-T-E-V-E-N, at collegerecruiter.com. Yeah, well, so that's the end of this uh, dog walking uh, episode <laughs> of Job Board Geek. Um, be sure to subscribe to us via RSS, Apple, Spotify, Google, et cetera, et cetera, all those great places. Um, my name is Jeff Dickey Chasens. I'm the Job Board Doctor, and you've been listening to the only podcast that focuses on the business of connecting employers and candidates. That's all for now. We'll see you again next time.